Welcome back, everybody. This is another episode of the Natives in America podcast. You're listening to Sky and Ben. Uh, this is episode 10, and it's the the magic episode. Uh, I'm glad you guys tuned in for this one. Uh, this is this is another one of those episodes where uh, Sky came into the came into the sit down with a with an unexpected. Um, <laughs> with an unexpected subject of the day of of the uh podcast and uh this was one of them it caught me off guard magic and I, I right out, right away I, I i laughed i i almost always laugh when he tells me the uh the subject of the day like i, I you got to give him credit where credit is due i would say the majority of the subjects we've talked about so far were skies and uh <laughs> i I, I think they're wackadoo when I first hear them. Like, well, we're going to talk about magic? Like, what's there to say about that? And then we start talking about it. And I'm like, yeah, well, this guy's put some thought in this. And it, it always inspires me to, like, try and, you know, throw something in there with it. And uh, I really enjoy making this episode. This is the magic episode. And, uh,. I know I say that about all the episodes, but I think uh, I think that's what brings us back. Like me and Sky have been coming back every week and recording. Uh, eventually, you guys catch up to this. And uh, just as a frame of reference, uh, this episode I th- I I, I want to say was recorded during the maybe the twenty sixth. Of September, it was it was done in September, and uh, right now it's Turkey Day. So you guys are hearing it. It's not, it's not Turkey Day. I keep thinking that it's uh, Thanksgiving. Like I'm doing this super early. I just got off of work, and uh, I'm burnt like I'm burned out. But like this is a good episode. Uh, we're 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 talking about magic, and like I was saying. Uh, you gotta give credit where credit is due. This guy comes in with uh, his own little mix, and, and and I enjoy. I've been enjoying, you know, all all our talks, and I enjoyed this one. This is, uh, so um, a little note on the photo. I've, I've uh, Ronnie sent me a couple more photos, and I, uh, I thought about the title and uh, chose this photo here. I thought it was like uh, credit for Ronnie. I, I see, I see, like I, I, I of the photos, this this photo um, seemed kind of magical, like the desert skies that we have on the res, like from our vantage point, from our, our homeland, from the from where we live, you know, the land, the land where we belong to, um, to see these colors all together kind of in the background of these crazy looking plants that we call saguaros it's uh it, it's something magical and ronnie once again captures these colors that i think uh, whenever anybody takes a picture of the sky i always say this you're, you're trying to capture these colors so kudos again to ronnie too um one thing that would change is I've been telling you guys, uh, Ronnie James, at, at Ronnie James Photography, and apparently there's an underscore at the end of that, so I, I, I had to bring that up there, just just in case there was any question of what site you were looking at, but I think I think once you see the photos, you, you realize it. Um, so, uh, any if you guys have been enjoying this, like I'm glad you guys are coming back, uh, Please subscribe and uh, hit notifications so that you can uh, have first access to these as soon as they're produced and put up on YouTube. And uh, I just want to say thanks again for tuning in, guys. Like this is uh, this this has been a lot of fun, and uh, I like to see that our our, nu- our numbers have grown. We've uh, started spreading this out a little bit on Facebook, and uh, thank you for everybody that uh, that's listening. So I hope you enjoy this episode. It's episode 10, uh, magic episode. So, so 
<laughs> oh, anyway, it's Wednesday again. It's the second, right? September second. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in the evening time, this guy's getting off of work. I'm, I'm, I'm probably gonna head to work sometime tonight. And uh, six something right now. Um, we're talking about the future. What are we talking about? We're talking about expectations. I'm talking about life and magic and yeah, visit. magic. Yeah. All right. So apparently, okay, there's a uh, David Blaine and one of the magicians is doing this. It's in Arizona too. Uh-huh. I think Paige. Uh, he's done. I don't know. I, haven't, I should look it up. Um, He's doing some kind of bubble, like walking in balloons, and and you know he was telling this story about always wanting to fly, and yeah, and so he's going to be doing this. I don't know. I must see it right now, but uh, I was just like, what is it about magic, or you know? Because it's a show, it's a, I mean, it's, a, hey, I have something for you to see. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times we know we're being fooled or it's a trick or it's a, some kind of scheme that, that we're just kind of just openly watching, but, like you were saying, there's like almost that kind of hint to, yeah. You're about to be fooled. Well, to, to me it was like, oh shit, is this real? Is this... Like you almost kind of want to buy into it. Yeah. Or you do. Um, but why is that? I, well, the funny thing is, you're like, this guy's about to pull one on, pull one over me. And you walk up and you listen and you watch. And I'm saying this guy because you know, fuck. I don't think I've, Any ever, guy. I've never seen a lady magician, as far as I know. And uh, anyway, uh, but yeah, you, somebody comes away. Hey, I'm gonna show you a trick. And you go, okay. And you kind of prepare yourself, like, all right, somebody's about to try to pull a fast one on me. And then you just kind of sit there watching, like, how how are they doing it? And what am I looking for? And sometimes a good a good magician can blow your freaking mind, like, make you, uh, make you believe. Yeah. Or be astonished. You see something that can't be possible, but it's happening right in front of you, in person, with your own eyes. I'm trying to, um, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, good. No, I'm trying to think. I mean, I've never really been, like, you know, amazed. Well, maybe I have on, on TV, but, like, not, like, in real life or. All right. If I remember you're the, saying not in person? Uh, no, I remember I've seen a, a hypnotist, and you know how they make people do silly things? Like, that was kind of. I don't know if we're getting off topic with the whole was that fake or was that real, but um Well shit, that's when you see something there's a show being put on and you're you're having to decide if it's legit happening or if it's just you know, everybody's all in on it or Yeah. You're almost you you're questioning what you're saying. Yeah. But, uh, I guess going back to magic, we know that it's. Or at least. Are, they, are they all? I don't know. Are they all I mean, tricks? That's all, that's all I'm trying to. Like, like there are people that can just go out and fool people? But it's not, you know, that simple. It's like, uh, they're an entertainer. Like, oh, like charisma and. Oh, you know, it's it's almost like an escape. 
I'm gonna go out and see some magic. You know, you're, you're, you're going to see the show. Or look, there's a magician. I'm gonna go watch and be, be amazed or, or uh, tripped or something. I'm, I'm gonna go see what's going on over there. And it's like, it's like curiosity. You want to know, you know, what's about to happen? What's going on? You get rushed with all these questions, and then you watch with your eyes. And uh, yeah. It's, uh, well, well, what's your point though? Like bringing it up, you're saying this guy, uh, so someone who's famous, is coming to Arizona. Like what? Uh, what, 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 made, oh, yeah. what made you think about it? Uh, my <laughs> trying to think of a topic, and then my bro was like, "Hey, there's a um, magician on YouTube, and he's in Page, which is like I know that I don't know that area like." My heart, but I, I'm pretty sure I drove through there a few times. It's in northern Arizona, and uh, so I was like, you know, what is it about magic or a magician that is is you know entertaining or intriguing? And then, but then it's just like what we're saying that that concept of kind of being fooled or not being fooled and and it's almost kind of embellishing with I mean, your imagination, like, yeah. you know, was it real? Was it not real? Um, yeah. But it's like we openly do that, or like we givingly, like. Hey, you participate. Yeah. In the illusion. But is that is that all the way? Is that everybody? Or I mean, I don't know. You know, some some people. Some people can maybe uh, call it when they see it, you know, the minute they see it, they're like, ah, he's doing this, they're doing that. Oh, this is bullshit, you know? And maybe that yeah. maybe that's how they have their fun. You know? Uh yeah. Like I I think yeah. the, I think the musician has their fun by getting the attention, you know? The yeah. spotlight. And maybe, you know, seeing seeing people smile or get amazed, you know, they like creating that, and then, uh, yeah, I don't know, we're, we're all willing participants when you walk up and you start watching or listening or whatever, like, uh, but like I said earlier, it, it, it feels, so, I, I don't know, I, I'm a big believer in a bunch of things that seem crazy and out of this world, like, uh, you know, ghosts, aliens, yeah. Yeah. space travel that's better than what we have right now, like, some sort of life on some other planet that's just a different chemical on the periodic table, maybe a completely different periodic table, and, uh -huh. uh, to believe that, sometimes I feel crazy, like, maybe, well, I know that what is that? Oh, that's the, uh, I got, I finally got to the page. Oh, oh, okay. It's called uh, Ascension. Ascension. Uh, flight test demonstration. Here, hold on, um, let me finish my thought, though, before we... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, well, all right, so, so, I believe in these things, uh, aliens... With with travel capability, uh, I believe in ghosts. Like just, I really do believe in ghosts. Like there's an energy or a resonance that uh, goes on in the land and in materials that like. Oh, you know, you know when a when an atom bursts, like like well, like a nuclear fission. Oh. The atom bursts and it shoots out electrons. And they fire in all directions, and if they hit something, it causes the next reaction, and it creates a chain reaction. Uh, what, yeah. what, what if we, when we die, that like the the loss of energy that was there explodes like that, goes in all directions? Do you, do you think it's possible that some part of you could be embedded in the material you die around? 
Or even in your not maybe not even when you die, but like you leave uh well hell, like dust, skin cells. It's oh, material yeah. it's material that your body created and then it's still in the house. Oh yeah. It remains uh, like parts of you, energy uh, material, mass. And say you've been uh, there forever, there's a shit ton of it just there. Like, what, oh, yeah. what, how it's not impossible to, uh, I, I don't think it's impossible to leave a resonance of yourself, oh. aka a ghost. Oh. So I think of it scientifically anyway. Oh. I aliens I approach scientifically, and the more I watch ancient aliens, the more I believe religions are, are uh, not just religions but actual tales of actual beings that were actually here and uh, that seems crazy when I think about it like when I compare that to the general um, I want to say yeah, consensus yeah. of, the, of, of the, the people in general but uh, it seems crazy but, you know, and then coming back to the whole magic thing, like, like I said before, there's a brief moment where you see something that doesn't make sense. And for that moment, you get that feeling like maybe the rest of it's possible. Uh -huh. you know, it, yeah. it's, it's that magic feeling I get when I think about possibilities like aliens and shit. Even, even when I'm thinking about life here, like... What uh? What's my next move? Yeah. And sometimes you get that that spark, that feeling, and I think that's what overall magic is about, creating that spark. Hmm. Nah, you know, I I almost see like this almost this little kid version of ourselves that can just believe whatever they want to believe and there's no limit until we start to become more conformed to like other people what other people have been, been taught prior and you know again like I've been even identifying as an adult you know you sort of got to <laughs> up, up all these adult about whatever ideals or truths or I don't know, I, I, but to, like you, we can't bring up aliens in any setting, you know. <laughs> but uh, maybe we could, but I think there's there's that I don't know that. I know that. Am I really saying this? Am I really believing this? Am I really... Huh. As a grown person, I, I identify with this adult persona or whatever. I, yeah. And going by that logic or that doctrine, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sounding silly. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and even applying that to like space travel and and you know we're being kind of silly right now about, about <laughs> 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 you know you need to put your childish fantasies you know so it's like magic is kind of thinking about it now it's almost like that child huh. my brother my brother was kind of saying kind of saying the same thing and sort of like you're not, you're not conflicted with the truth or fiction or non-fiction. It's sort of all just possible. Yeah. But, I like that. but I mean, I'm not a kid right now. I'm an adult, but yet, <laughs> why is my child's imagination not the same thing? Like, are you an adult, though? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> By age, I was a, yeah, I can't call myself one, but yeah, I, still, I still feel like I'm figuring it out. Right there. Yeah. I, I said it out loud the other day. I was like, yeah, I'm an adult. 
I was like, hey, yeah. I'm, I'm an adult. And, and when I said it, I felt stupid because I kind of immediately got flashed back to all the times I've said that sentence. Yeah. But like the worst is probably when when I was 18. Like, oh, I'm an adult now because of legally, <laughs> legally, you know, legally. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I'm an adult. I'm the adult here, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm an adult. <laughs> God. And I had this, like, funny feeling in my stomach or in the back of my mind, just like, <laughs> am I an adult? Like, yeah. What, what, yeah, what's shit. changed since I was 18, really? Like, fuck. A lot of, I, I, I guess wisdom, you, you make mistakes and you learn from them, hopefully, and I don't know. I don't. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm still figuring it out too. Yeah, I and mean, like so, so I guess magic is kind of like that space where you can kind of still. Yeah. Uh, well, at least that's sort of what I was getting from my brother who was suggesting this whole thing. But I, I was. I like I said, like I can't really think of a magician that I I was like, oh that's a badass magician. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean I think of like uh what was that guy's name? He wrote the motorcycles and like try to jump like over big things. Um, evil? Yeah. All right. I, I mean that. Is, isn't that a little magic too? I, I, think it, really, I, I think what we're really talking about is what's been called magic. Is that feeling? Uh huh. Not just the magic trick or the magician, but that magic feeling. Yeah. And, and going back to uh, what you were talking about as a kid, like that, or feeling like a kid, like you you go to the Evil Knievel show, you, you're excited to watch, you're a little fearful something might go wrong, at the same time, you're like, he just might make it. <laughs> and uh, and on, on that note, and we're talking about, all right, why, why do you, it's something you can do as an adult that kind of brings back that feeling. I was just thinking about uh, scary movies. Yeah. Like, if you watch a scary movie, like, like we know we know it's a movie, so, like, yeah. we're aware of that shit, but sometimes you watch a good scary movie and you find yourself scared like a little kid again, like that little bit of feeling where it's like, oh... And you don't yeah. feel, you don't feel that all the time as an adult, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but well, I'm kind of going that route. You know, I I was always sort of like like this is a this is made to make me scared or draw fear in me. This this movie or this genre or this yeah, like, it was intended to scare me. Um, and I guess that was always sort of, not confliction, but like, uh, a movie really had to be like, scary as shit to like, for me to be like, oh, uh, this is, because there are some scary movies where you're like, man, this is fake. Like, it's not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not convinced oh, to like, right. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I'm magician right there. <laughs> but, you know, like, some people might be scared by that. So it's just, I guess it's kind of like, maybe I'm, I'm diving more into the the film genre, but, like, <laughs> but no, but, like, yeah, like, people, because some people love horror films, like, but they get excited about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, for me, like, I think I like uh, Rosemary's Baby. I think that was probably the most scariest shit I've ever seen. But like, it wasn't. 
Really? It wasn't horribly like. I know. I, I think it was like Chucky. Like, Chucky, I, yep, I'm laughing because this is funny. <laughs> it's, I guess it's. That shit used to scare the fuck out of me. And I watch it now and I just kind of laugh. You know, uh, with the one we're going on, we couldn't always watch certain movies, so we kind of had to go to our cousin's house to watch, <laughs> watch the good movies. And, uh, and so, like, maybe it was always just kind of like a, a fear of knowing they know I watched it, so I had to just watch it man up, you know, or <laughs> not show that it was scary. Yeah. Maybe, that's, maybe that's why I don't like horror films or the, I don't see them when they're in Austin's, but like, uh, yeah, no, but I think that's, that's that kind of like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to see if this can scare me or, I don't know. It's, yeah. Again, it's like willingness to try to be pulled or I don't know, caught off guard. Yeah. Well, what's a scary movie to you that that you actually were like? Well, I, I got several in mind, but I think the one that we that you probably seen more likely out of the three is uh, Creep Show and Creep Show Two. Mm. Have you seen them? Nah, I'm, really? well, I'm not really a movie guy anymore. Yeah, yeah we've covered that. Yeah, what, what about Fright Night? Fright Night. It's like really old, old fucking movie. I don't think so. Movie. All right. Uh, shit. Uh, you, know, you know what fucking scared me was uh, the Blair Witch Project, the first one. Oh yeah, that that was well done, and part of it is like, all right, th some of this is true, right? Like it was like, wasn't some of this true? Like, were didn't the campers actually disappear, and didn't they actually have footage? Yeah, you know, but like, that. like I, I don't know, but, but like I, I've been in the in the wild and heard some shit, you know, like it was very yeah. possible. Yeah. You don't even have to be in the woods for some freaky ass shit to happen to you like that. Oh, I mean, uh, we just went off topic here. Well, all right. No, well, no, I was saying I got it one time. Movie. I seen this some big ass rattlesnake, and I didn't. Uh huh. It was just laying there, and it was all coiled up, and. It was so huge. It was just that was scary. I mean, just kind of knowing that uh, I didn't want it there, but it, it was there. <laughs> um, but uh, I kind of got lost. Well, uh. I feel like that's a different type of but, of fear, like... No, nah, yeah, 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 no, but... So, kind of going back to Blair Witch Project, I was upset because I thought it was real, and they played it off like it was real, but then and later on, then the actors came out, and it was just a joke, you know? That got me upset, and I didn't see the movie the same anymore. Oh, uh, you just ruined it for me now. And oh, then... Ruined. Okay. And then... But then, interesting though, like my brother and my cousin, like, they still watched it knowing that it was, I mean, there probably, there might have been some noises they heard, but I mean, just, it, the way it ended, you know, it was, everybody was okay, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like how it played in my head, the movie. That must have been the second one, because no, nobody was okay in the end of the Blair Witch. Uh, I know there was a few, like, I kind of, after the first one, I stopped, because I thought they were all bullshit. Well, I'm only, uh, I'm only talking about the first one, that, that one got Yeah, me. no, that was, I mean, 
It was... Well, I don't know. I, I, the, the ending scene of Blair Witch is they're in the cabin with all the same signs... Or one of them's in, the, you know, going in with the camera as he lost his friends, mm-hmm. and he finds one, and the like the only one he's seen in a while, with their face in the corner of the room, and then boom, he gets hit and drops the camera, and that's it. Yeah. Um. They're all okay. They're still alive. Oh, you mean, you mean the actors? Yeah. Well, wait a minute, though. Like, the I don't actors, know. I the, guess wait, so. wait, 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 wait. The actors played this movie. Like, I don't think. I feel like they acted out shit that was actually found. Uh, but if they're saying Blair Witch was the movie, then yeah, no. Oh, uh, well, maybe I understood it wrong as a kid, but it was, to me, it was just, you know, I guess it was like a. Because I thought it was more of a documentary, but I guess it was just a film. The, the second one was like a documentary. Are we, are we, I don't know. We're talking about the same shit, but... All right, well, in, in The Blair Witch, the first one, uh-huh. uh, there's a scene. Like, like I camp a lot. Uh-huh. So this one fucking scene really got to me. Like, I, I camp in a tent most of the time. Sometimes I'll be, like, out under the sun on the ground and shit, like on a blanket or something. But for the most part, growing up, we would camp in tents. And, uh, middle of the night, like, a lot of times we were out there at Bobo. Like, uh-huh. at, at the base of the mountain. And that's that's deep fucking desert right there. Like, deep yeah. desert. Like, if you really think of, like it, like, there's, like accommodations there like a toilet and like uh, running water and you know like tables and shit parking spaces you got your cars you got your tents you feel safe but that is deep fucking desert and sometimes sometimes you're the only ones out there and it's at the base of a fucking mountain that has mountain lions like it's it's wild yeah and and I've heard shit like we'll, we'll be sitting in the tent and you'll hear shit, and there's there's always that moment where you sit up in your tent, and for the most part, you can't see through them unless you, like, stand up and look out the net or something, if, if you have the top off or whatever. And there's always this moment where you're just, like, quiet, and you're listening. And, like, there's this sense of safety because you got, like, this enclosure over you, but that's just, like, it's thinner than a tarp. You know what I mean? Like, it's so clear. Yeah. Nothing would keep anything out of you except for the visibility, like, maybe to an animal that would see a solid shape in their head. Maybe. Maybe. And yeah. so there's this little tiny sense of security, and then you're out there in the fucking wild, and you hear something out in the bushes. And you get quiet, and I, there's a bunch of times where I turn on the light, like you'll have like a flashlight or like a lantern, and then it'll be like, uh, so you flip on the lantern, and uh, but you, there's also times where you feel like I don't want to draw attention by turning on the light, so I'm just gonna sit here in the dark. You know, there's this fear, this something's out there, and then in the Blair Witch movie uh they were sitting in their tent and then something actually touched the fucking tent you know like Mm. there was always waiting for that to happen but it never happened Mm. and then in Blair Witch something touched the tent and pressed into it and it looked like a a hand and then I think a face or something and that shit fucked me up and you hear the sound the noise and it's there and that, you know that barrier is not going to protect you, so what do they do? They run out of the fucking tent, and they're out in the trees, in the dark, completely blind. All they got is a camera, and that's some freaky-ass shit. That shit got me as, yeah. like, as like that that fear. I think I, I watched it as an adult. <laughs> I was as an adult. I think I watched it. I think I watched it 
maybe my early teens. Ah. Uh, maybe even 12. But yeah, I had already camped out a lot, and that shit fucked me up. Did you yeah. did, did you have a scary movie that got you? Um, I mean, I think Exorcist was pretty. Yeah. I mean, just just because it was that little girl like saying this shit she was saying to the priest and how religion was kind of tied to it, and it's like. Yeah. Kind of like good and evil really going down. Yeah. Um, and that was pretty scary. <laughs> you, know, and, uh, you know the scene in uh, Signs when they videotaped the alien at the party? Yeah. Um, I mean, that moment was pretty trippy. Yeah. Um, well, a lot of it's alien. It wasn't even a scary movie, but that shit fucked me up too. It was good. It was well made. Yeah, no, that's a, see, like I don't know if you would consider that a horror film, but I don't think it is. It it, it does with the horror films. Yeah, of course it did. Yeah, it drew that that sense out of you. Well, yeah, you're you're something that is not. Maybe not taken seriously, or you're questioning whether it's real or not, and it <coughs> becomes real, and you gotta somehow manifest it or address it. But yeah, that was with the alien. Um, there's that one scene in um, is it Independence Day where they're cutting open the alien. And then they're like, uh, like they're like dissecting the head, and then that shit just pops out. And, yeah. and you, you, you kind of gotta like lean back in your chair because I don't know. I I guess films sort of like what, what, what like that whole musician magician sort of. I'm gonna lay something on you and. Yeah. <laughs> And, 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 it's, and it's not magical, but it's gonna make you think something's going on. <coughs> yeah. Like we're using uh, human means. We're using what we have in our possession to make it happen. But we're gonna make it seem impossible. The possibility is sort of. I don't know. It's like for a moment there you're, you're questioning it. Um, but then, uh, I did finally watch uh, Alfred Hitchcock, The Birds, was it? Uh-huh. I, I barely watched it like about a month ago or two months ago. Uh, um, I'm not even sure I've seen it. You know? That's not... Usually how it goes. Usually you're the one that <laughs> sees well, that's film. an older one. Like I feel like I have seen it. Like I, I, I can see scenes in my head, but it might have been from like other sources. Yeah. So what um, do you think when you watch the birds? I, I mean, I, I thought it was a pretty trippy movie. Um, but it was sort of like there was depth to that because I mean. Even after it over, I was like, you know, I started reading reviews and, and I wanted to hear what other people thought about it because it was, yeah. um, it was not, not provoking, but just sort of, you know, why was that happening? Why was it, was it, well, you know, it's pretty much this lady, she goes out of her way to, to give this guy two of these birds, they're, they're like love birds or song birds, I can't remember, but um, that town that she visits just all of a sudden she gets attacked by birds, like they go crazy. Mm-hmm. And um, they think that they're attacking the kids, which they are attacking the kids. 
Um, I know it's just weird because then there's these this there's these parts in the film where like people are saying like birds wouldn't do that, and like there's all these opinions on birds, and, and I know some people don't like birds, and yeah. and some people think that they're the most you know the beautiful creature in the world, and I don't know it's just there's all these different stories and. So, I mean, I, I, I think the core of maybe what makes a good horror film is the the inner dialogue of, like, what you're questioning. Yeah, yeah. But in that film, you're like, it's just the end of the world. You know, like, the birds do have control. Like, there's so many of them. What if they one day just decide, man, no, let's go kill these guys? And, and you don't know if that... If they're thinking that, like they could be, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, I don't know, there's just a lot of shit tied into that. And then, um, and then they finally get to escape. And yeah, it's just, you know, a lot of unanswered questions, which is maybe why Blair Witch is, Blair Witch Project is, a, is, it scares you, but it also lets you questioning a lot of shit. Yeah. Um, I got one. I got one. I, I came up with it while you were talking about the bird. I was thinking about real. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> I thought of another movie that yeah, yeah, yeah. that we probably both have seen. Like, if you haven't seen this, I, think there, may be no, <laughs> I think there may be no hope for you. Uh, okay, yeah. So here we go. Uh, arachnophobia. Arachnidphobia. Uh, uh, <laughs> what the hell? Uh, is that like it has to do with spiders? Dear God, yes. I don't want to say I have, but I don't think I have. Uh, it's uh, Jeff Bridges. Dumb and Dumber? Yeah. John Candy. John Candy? Yeah, the great outdoors. He's in there. He's he's just like a a sub um, a, a minor part. Oh, Uncle Buck. And, and then that weird as the like uh he's the uh he does what Dale Gribbles does. He's he's a exterminator. Uh nah, man, I'm sorry, bro. Wow. All right, motherfucker, well, we need to start a list, and that needs to go at the top of your list. That shit. Why? That shit is about spiders. Do you have any kind of phobias about spiders? Oh, Do you feel damn. any way towards spiders? Yeah. Um, what do they call it? The recluse? Yeah. The little ones? Yeah. It bit your mom, right? Yeah. And, like... That was some of the most scariest things ha- that ever happened to somebody. I know that I was there, and I was like, what the hell? All because of this little bug and or insect or arachnophobia. Rachn- I don't know. I'm, but I, um, I do know people are scared of them, and I, I see why. Um, they're scary. I stay away from them, but... I don't know if I could diagnose myself and say I'm, I'm arachnophobic or whatever. Well, I think everybody has a little bit of arachnophobia, except for maybe like arachnidologists or something. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like people yeah. who love freaking spiders and love them so much they want to learn about them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some really interesting shit about spiders, and they kind of practically live everywhere. Um, but. Uh, The movie, the, the movie, yeah. The movie is basically about a soup, a special breed of spiders that comes out uh, under special circumstances, and next thing you know, they start enveloping this small town to try to like expand and create their nest, and uh, they 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 kind of do all the things that people are afraid of spiders, but really. They're just spiders. Like, we're, like, a thousand times bigger than them. You know, like, we're 
I get it, but we have this uncontrollable fear. Some of us, I, I, occasionally people in my, you know, I've been asked to kill spiders. I got no problem doing that. Like they're like, oh, there's a spider in here. We like, gotta get it. Like especially like black widows, if they're hanging mm. out in places where the kids play or whatever, I, I get them. Yeah. They're at, they're at work. They're everywhere. You know the spiders. And um, well, this movie just preys on that. But there's like one characteristic, well, it was kind of like how you were describing birds thinking about us, like, hey, they could be thinking that, like, a lot of people think of spiders, like, they have tiny, tiny fucking brains, but like, everybody's like, <laughs> oh, it's after me, that one came after me. Yeah. Well, on arachnophobia, there was this one type of spider where all its legs kind of curl forward, and, uh. Uh, and they jumped, they would jump at you. And in real life, there are spiders that I always see on the wall in cold fields. I, I, I'm sure I've seen them in town, but I really see them in cold fields. And uh, they kind of hang around, and all their legs, all eight of them, kind of curl forward. Uh -huh. And I don't know if they're just falling towards me or if they're, you know, just trying to escape the shoe that I'm trying to hit them with or the broom or whatever. And they're jumping to save their life. But those motherfuckers get me. Uh, I'll go to get them and they jump or fall or something and they're coming at me and it's like, ah, you tried to kill me. You know, like, ah, like I get that fear. Like, whoa, get the fuck out of me. Like, yeah. I have no problem getting spiders, but I think having them on me, like having live little fingers crawling up my skin, it bothers me. It's like, nope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And this movie, it preys on that. And, like, if you'd seen it, I think you would remember it. Even if you remember, like, little parts of it. I bet you have seen it. Because it's, it's actually pretty old. Like, Jeff Bridges looks exactly like he does in Dumb and Dumber. But it's, like, a fucking 80s movie. I mean, John Carter uh, passed away a long time ago. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe I, I, I don't remember it. Break out your little pen pad, your pad and paper, and write down arachnophobia. Arachnidophobia. Arachnophobia. Yeah, well. The fear of spiders and. Yeah, it's a fear of spiders. I mean, but just that. The imagination of the after you. It's kind of... It's ridiculous. Yeah, I bet. Is it, though? No, I... Um, this is poem about this snake that's in this guy's uh, water trough. And he gets, uh... He gets scared, you know, because it's in his water trough. And then... You know, he scares it off, throws a rocket or whatever, and the snake goes away. And he's kind of like, you know, that was my snake. And yeah, so the, it's almost like a romantic relationship. You know, it's like this crazy creature is here to attack me, but then I'm going to kill it. And <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's just kind of... Um, it's like a lot of it's in their head of what's going on, and the snake is just chilling. It's not doing anything. Mm. They don't even care about you or your life or your thoughts. So, <laughs> so it's just, yeah, it's kind of... But then you fuck with them, and then, you, then you're going to get your shit yeah. fucked with back. Well, so, you know, that, that's kind of my ongoing advice is don't fuck with it. You don't want to get hurt by this crazy animal or insect or whatever. Don't fuck with it. Sorry, I had to throw that in. No, there. no, 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 but you're, you're, kind, of, you're, you're kind of, we're kind of, we're kind of going back to that whole, that, not so much the possibility or the sense of kind of not knowing. Yeah. And all that. Yeah, I guess we are. 
that playful anything can happen in space where shit or yeah, a, maybe or a spider tracks you throughout your house and tries to get you or he's been scheming that whole fucking <laughs> yes. sitting in the corner <laughs> rubbing all his, all his feet together <laughs> yeah, 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 just like, like, uh, or your time is almost up man uh-huh. <laughs> uh, but as, time tomorrow night I think that there's a lot of a lot of things that are that have our attention and like magic or horror films maybe a certain amount or diving into them too deep we might hurt ourselves or set ourselves up for failure you know just kind of like being gullible and believing everything a magician does and and getting scared at every movie that you see because it's supposed to get you scared. I mean, I think that's the whole growing up part of it where as a kid you can freely think about these things and be, oh, that could happen, um, what if that happened? And, and uh, what's funny is like what we're saying like, as an adult, like, that qualifies me now to, <laughs> to make a statement and it's legit, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm hitting anything, but it's, uh, I mean, it's like, like any, like, like knowledge, like, or, you know, there's, there's some knowledge that can be harmful to you, you know, or, um, some things that maybe you shouldn't know. Okay. Uh, well, this may take it a different route, but are there things you think a kid should know or not know? Um. Hmm. Maybe at a certain age. Yeah, uh, when, when I when I say kids, I'm thinking of like a three year old to maybe a six year old. Oh, I don't know. I mean, because then that could be like now you can't trust nobody, you know. But oh, no. but then there are some things where well, hell, that's know, a big one though, isn't it? I don't know. I mean, that's a... Like, thinking everybody's okay? Isn't that something you should teach a kid pretty early on, that they're not all okay? I don't know. I mean... Like, that the nice man with candy isn't your friend? I don't know. That's a... I... I would... In my head, I'm thinking... A younger version of myself might think everybody was cool. Everyone was good. Yeah. But kind of knowing that maybe that's not the case, I, now I'm, I'm a little bit more aware of that possibility or skeptical about, um, someone else's intentions um, I don't know I, I, I think it's like uh, not so much uh, crushing someone's dreams but like I don't know that's a tough question man because I guess I mean, that's what it's, I'm not, I don't have, I'm not a parent. You guys got a lot of responsibility to start making those decisions, but, well, yeah. like, you, you kind of want them to have their own thoughts and, and ideals, so, but. Be- becoming a parent definitely flipped the script on me, of my thinking. Wow. Uh-huh. But we, we've all been kids. Yeah. So I think 
think really you just got to think about what you would want for you had you been your own parent. Huh. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, oh, I wish this didn't happen. Or, oh, I wish my parents had taught me this. Hmm. I've kind of I've kind of been going over that stuff myself as a parent and like even before I was a parent I think about how I would do it better as a parent for my kid yeah and I'm even finding now that you know I'm, I still drop the ball oh. and, you know you, you were shown one way you go oh I can do better than that yeah. And then you get in you get in the driver's seat and you make your own mistakes. So, so yeah. it's, it's it definitely makes me think differently about my parents. Huh. Like for one thing, they were kids at some point. You know, they were young and yeah, I freaks me out. And they were me. You know, they were they were doing things that I I'm doing. Maybe I'm doing them earlier or later, but. You know, I, with my dad, I kind of, when I hear about his past, I get, I, not so much I feel comfortable, but I, I feel like as an, as an adult, <laughs> I, I can kind of be like, oh, I understand, I understand, you know, like, yeah. I get that, I, I'm not even like, you know, ashamed or anything. But then, when I, I think of my mom as a teen, and being a kid, I'm like, what? Like, that, how, you know, but, you know, I, I lost my dad, like, when I was, like, 12, so there, I had a lot of time with my mom, like, it's still going with me and my mom, so it's kind of like, we yeah, have, we're going through this new stages even when when there's like grandkids now although it's like another chapter so a lot of times like I don't know I guess I see my mom differently in a in a different way so yeah it feels like uh, maybe that's why I still feel like a kid because she's still she's still being my mom <laughs> yeah um, so, so kind of wondering what, what, I don't know what, like, what I wish they would have taught me. I can't really think of anything, you know, like, from, I guess what you're supposed to know versus what you got to figure out on your own, you know? Yeah. I mean, what you like, who you like, <laughs> um, <laughs> bless you, yeah. you know, how you're going to conduct yourself, what you're going to surround yourself with, like, yeah. um, I think what my mom, she always, and she kind of says it too, like, she's, she's like, man, I, I think I taught you bad money skills, like, just kind of. <laughs> I don't know, you know, like yeah. And so sometimes it's not to say that I'm blaming my mom because I'm I'm not a rich millionaire, but it's like um, you know, I watched her handle her business. Yeah. You know, so um, but I don't maybe to her standard, she thinks she's in a bad spot, or she's in a she could have been in a better spot. If she had done things differently. I think that's with everybody, you know, like, we get to that point where we can go back and be like, man, if I had done this, it yeah. might have been this way, you know, yeah. but I don't, sometimes that's not a good thing, because then you're kind of saying the decision I made was the wrong one, versus, I guess hearing it, the way you say it, but, yeah. Um, well, it, it's funny that you mentioned money. Cause that's like one thing my mom said to me like she was very adamant about it. she said don't get credit cards <laughs> don't take loans 
I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And I didn't for the longest time, like many years. Yeah. At least a decade, maybe. And then uh, I got credit cards, and then I think I had lost my job or something. And to make myself feel better, I started using the card to just get shit, like shit that I wanted. And uh, I've been paying it ever since. You know, like I've been paying it. You know, yeah. high, high interest rates and whatnot. And um, now, it's like, now, now it's like I had to make the mistake. It's like, yeah. aha, aha, maybe, <laughs> maybe she was on to something when she warned me. You know? Well, I mean, that's, that's kind of funny. We're talking about what we wish they taught us, and yet there are some things they taught us. But we, we <laughs> yeah. <wish> they, <laughs> That's, uh, that's a good point. So I don't know. They might have taught us, so we just didn't listen. Yeah, well, well, then maybe there's a dream, too. Damn, well, I they wish might, I listened. They probably gave us the keys to the... I don't know, man. You know... They probably gave us a lot of gems, and they might have just slept on it. Yeah, you know? right. Just like, hey, here's a, here's a gem, and you're just like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, in, uh, in one uh, year, yeah, another one. Oh, <laughs> uh, another one. Um... I was just thinking that, like, all right, that's one thing I will adamantly teach Amadeus. And then I was thinking about it, I was like, fuck, if he listens, like, <laughs> I could do it until I'm blue in the face, but he just might not listen and has to learn for himself how bad it is. You know, but it's kind of like, you know, that lead by example sort of like, you're kind of, I'm, I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to show you sort of. I think that's what it becomes. You know what? Okay. I think my mom showed me to. Yeah. Uh, so. Like, but, but, since he brought it up, like, damn it. I'm like, fuck, because I'm probably not a great example right now. I mean, he's still young, but he's very impressionable. Yeah. He's so freaking smart. He picks up Everything. Oh yeah, it's a sponge. It's a sponge, man. Yeah. Uh, I, I, well, my parents had my sister, I think, when they were in their thirties, thirty-two. That's about uh, that's about the time I had Amadeus. We had Amadeus. I think I was like thirty when, uh, when we knew, and then thirty-one when he was born. I think. Yeah. Yeah, but I guess imagine if you were eighteen or twenty. <laughs> Holy I would fuck. think I would things would be different. Yeah, well that that's another thing. Like I was I was raised by older parents than what I, mo- most of my friends' parents were. Like a lot of my friends' parents were super young. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I think maybe that's kind of like maybe explains why me and my mom kind of we don't beef, but we some people might think our normal talking is yelling or arguing. <laughs> but, uh, I think sometimes we. I call it butting heads. Yeah, we butt heads. Uh, but we, we kind of do it just intentionally. <laughs> I'm a head right now, you know. That's what you're saying. But, you know, it is kind of like, is it the parent's job to question the kid's uh, yeah. perception of reality? Like, you know, like, Maybe not so much daydreaming is yeah. instead of actually doing what you need to do, you know. Man, I just I just had a recent argument with my mom about all that. And it, it was about her perspective versus mine, and in the end, I just kept saying, "Look, uh, this, is, this is me. Mm. This is the best I'm doing with what I got," you know. And mm. what I learned, what I was taught, what I experienced. This is me now. Like you, 
you may never see eye to eye with me because you grew up the way you did and I grew up the way I did. Mm. But it started off with her, you know, checking where my head was at and it wasn't deprived with what she wanted, what she thinks, uh. how she thinks. And uh, we just started butting heads. Heavy, heavy, heavy stuff, man. Yeah, but it's like, what about, uh, as, uh, Amadeus gotten out of you? Oh, yeah. I think, well, worst, uh, of, worst of all, I think I'm teaching him to have, like, a short temper, which is not good. Why do you say that? Well, because I'm short with him sometimes, man. Like, sometimes he repeats himself or repeats himself like until you acknowledge it. It drives me nuts. So I'll, I'll snap at him. And I just wonder, like, I've been snapped at, you know? And uh. I've had I have plenty of bad experiences. And I, I always wonder, like, uh, I always wonder at what point does that crossroads get past at one point is there no coming back and I always wonder like because he he's not with me all the time like half the time he's with his mom and it makes me wonder like what's he like with them mm. like he has his life here with me where we have our interactions and it's usually just me and him and then he goes back over there and he's with his mom and his brother and his sister yeah. and they're Living their type of life over there. Yeah. So, in, in the one hand, I'm trying to make sure that I'm nice and loving to him more so than I ever got, and at the same time that he still wants to be around me. And at the other, on the other hand, there's like this discipline I'm trying to teach him, and at the same time. Sometimes I, I snap at him, I lose my temper, or I just, you know, I'm not as patient with him as I should be, and, uh, and I always wonder, like, fuck, I wonder what, how he is, how he, when he leaves my house, how is he interacting out there from what he learned from me? Like, the part, the part I'm concerned with, like, is... Am I make am am I giving him any kind of type of complex that maybe I have, you know, from lear learning bad behaviors, or having bad experiences? Am, is is he getting any of that from me? So it's a constant like balance and like uh, reevaluating where I'm coming from, mm. and as he ages. It gets more and more complex. Yeah. Because he starts understanding more and more complex uh, uh, yeah, concepts. Concepts. That's the word I was looking for. So he's learning more and more concepts, and he's picking up. Like I keep finding and seeing signs of him learning something yeah. that I've taught him and stuff that maybe. I'm like, oh, did I teach him that? Like, whoa, like, he could, maybe he just picked that up all on his own. Like, well, I was playing the game with him, and uh, and this was like a complex game. It was like a zombie game. You're getting chased and attacked. And he put forth the concept, I think they're only attacking that night. And it blew my fucking mind. He's three. I'm like, what the fuck, son? And I started thinking about it. I was like, that's a really good possibility that, you know, because I kept getting attacked. And I'd get out and get in, and sometimes it was worse than other times. And when he put forth that concept for a second, I was like, holy fuck. Like, <laughs> he just, like, threw out a theory on this really complex system that maybe he doesn't even fully understand, but. Because of this theory, I'm like, holy fuck, maybe he understands more than I even thought he could. 
Oh, he's yeah. Like, he's like, I think they only attack at night. Or something like that. He said something very close to that. Uh, and, and I looked at it, and I was like, it's nighttime, and I'm getting fucking torn up. But a minute ago, I wasn't. Like, there was nothing around. And it was daytime. And I'm like, fuck, is that what it is? And then I got, wow. atta- and then I got attacked in the daytime, but it was a valid fucking theory. And the fact that he had, could come up with it all by himself, I didn't say, hey, what do you think? He's just like, I think they're coming at night. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Mind-blowing stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, he's smart, and I wonder all the time, what am I teaching him? What should, like, what's too early to teach him certain things, like? Can I? Should I be watching certain things on the TV when he's with me? Mm, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I remember. Uh, no, uh, it was a ham. It was a. Uh, it was. It was almost like a mini. Oh, no, but it, it went on your wrist. And you were, it, it made it out of popsicles. And it was a legit good to hurt you, you know? Like, because it, it shot out two picks. And uh-huh. I tied this to the little guy, and I'm like, hey, man, this is, you know, check this out. And then we realized, okay, I just taught this kid how to make a weapon. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 to summarize, that might not be <laughs> a, a, a good, a good thing. thing to teach. Um, that wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, let's make, let's make a weapon to hurt somebody. It was kind of like, let's make something out of nothing with these popsicle sticks <laughs> and toothpicks and rubber bands. Yeah, um, make something cool. Yeah. And then it turns so, out, wait a minute, they could legitimately hurt themselves with this thing. Or other people. Or not. I mean, that's sort of, I guess it kind of, I mean, it's sort of all in the, you know, what's top. Um, Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I mean, it's good to question yourself, you know, uh, you're doing it, you know, at least you're not, at least you're not running from it or avoiding it. Or, I can I can't imagine not, not you're, doing you're, it. You're seriously, seriously taking it on, so I think, you know, those are challenges parents have. Uh, well, I don't know. Well, uh, uh, we got ten minutes before I gotta call this. Um, to sum it up, what would you say we've been talking about this whole time? We're talking about our imagination um, and how we. Um, and sometimes, I don't know, it's like, not be fooled by the possibility, but, um, you know, going along with, with the arts, whether it be a film or a magic show or a daredevil, yeah. you know, you're, you're participating in a in a show or act to a film that's I don't know, it's kinda of like what you bring to it too. Yeah. Um Your expectation. Yeah. But then kinda as we get older we can't <clears throat> we can't call ourselves kids forever, you know, so we yeah. do Except the more mature role, I guess, and and sometimes 
some of those topics we were talk, talking about get, I don't want to say diminished, but like, um, they aren't accepted by the whole, um, by the whole kind. <laughs> I don't know, have you ever met someone that didn't believe in aliens that was just sort of like, yeah, well, you're, you're bullshitting. <laughs> You're a fucking moron. Yeah, yeah. I'm tr I'm trying to think of somebody specific, but it's like absolutely there has to be. You know what's funny, or it's funny to me, is uh, I met the the probably one of the few people that would argue most against it would be a religious person. Ah. Uh, like in uh, my mind, like that's who would actually go. Ah, oh, there's no aliens. Just God up there, you know, or something like that, like, I don't, I don't think I've ever had, like, a teacher say, oh, aliens don't exist, I, I, all, 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 all I'll say is, I feel like it's important to have magic in your life, not mm. necessarily from a magician with, you know, card tricks and shit, but like, uh, uh, I want, I want to call it a sense of wonder. Yeah. And I think it's a, a very kid-like sense of wonder. So maybe... Uh, or, or at the very least, while you're learning about the world, kids... It's easier for kids to... Uh, to be amazed. When they see something for the first time. Yeah. And... That's what you see at the magic show too. It's like you're you're an adult, but you're amazed. Which you know, you know, uh, there, there was a really good concept that I saw in a movie, but I'm, I'm gonna refer to it a different way. Uh, uh, when, when you're older, you have less and less events in your life about that excitement, that that wonder. Mm -hmm. They're far and few between. They're spread out now. Like as a as a kid, it's like every day you're learning something, or you know, you go to school, yeah. you go to school, and they're teaching you some brand new concept, and you're like, oh wow, this is interesting. Or you read a book, and there's some story going on, and the world is unfolding to you. And then as you get older, you learn, you know, maybe it's not all true. Maybe some of it is, and maybe not all of it is, and you know. Things you were taught as a kid by your parents wind up being total bullshit, you know, or, you know, something like that where you start seeing, uh, uh, one of the best ways I've heard it described was you see the strings at the pub show, to quote, to quote yeah. Jerry, Jerry Maguire. Yeah. And uh, it's like <laughs> you, you've seen it. You, you know the world's a lot faker and less filled with wonder. And yeah. so to get that feeling of wonder that you know you usually held as a kid, it takes you back or it makes you feel good or you get to, yeah, it's it's almost like a drug addict being addicted to something. They're chasing that that good feeling, and maybe we're all addicted to feeling youthful or that youthful excitement about life. So we're all chasing it. Yeah, so do we... Do you think by sort of conforming, or not conforming, but by identifying as an adult, you sort of, you know, cut ties with this... Yeah, with, you, with your youth, with your youthful self? Yeah. You've somehow transfor transformed... Because then, you know, you could argue, not argue, but it's like someone not buying in could say you're, you're gullible or you're wasting your time. But, yeah, no, it's, it's this, it's kind of like, you know, like, they say that with uh, like with kids when they're born or when they're like they 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 know that dragons exist. You know they know that like 
there's creatures out there. They know that they're there. Yeah. But as we get older, we kind of stop. Yeah. Remembering that. Yeah. I know, it's just that wonder, I guess, that childlike wonder. Kind of put it to the side to to be a working adult, you know, a responsible citizen, um, a taxpayer. I don't know. We, <laughs> we, 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 we kind of we, we kind of say these things that we're proud of that are not really like when someone says, "I pay my taxes," you know, like I hate yeah. that fucking shit. It's like it's like what the? Why do we say that? You know, like. You know, what does that have to do with it? Well, it's just sort of, I don't know, it's like sometimes being a doll is almost what kills our, our fun. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, nah, it's, I guess it's a part of life, though, in a sense, because, um, you know, maybe that's the responsibility of the parents to to try to have them hold on to that. Well, I don't know. It was, uh, okay. Like, yeah, are we might, trying to, like, I mean. You might have touched on something, like, when we're doing all the holidays. Yeah. You kind of try to keep that wonder alive a little bit longer. Oh, uh, I don't know. There's a lot of different things we talk about that, but yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. That I think that all the the politics and the the actual legwork of how the world the world works is not that glamorous, you know. Like <laughs> <laughs> I think, like Wizard of Oz, you know, like they're they're. You're going to see this magical thing, and it's all it is is some guy behind a curtain. That's, yeah. And now that you said the puppet and yeah, that's, and the, the puppet and the strings. Yeah, yeah. Strings. So, I mean, it's. Huh. I don't know. I guess maybe we get tired of it as a kid and just say, "Well, it's better to be an adult." <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I I I, I think <laughs> you know I, what I, I, think, think, I think you know, Eddie remember. Was, you remember um, Pinocchio? Yeah. When he, like, I can't remember the scene where he goes off and he's, like, partying with all these kids and they're, like, having a good time and he's not supposed to be doing that. He's supposed to, And I don't know, I just... And he's smoking. I don't know, I just... I remember something like that. No, I completely I, forgot about that. Yeah. But I remember that part in the movie just being, like... You could be a kid, but you could also be not responsible, or like almost. I don't know. It's, I wonder what that film was intended to do. But yeah, it's just kind of Disney shit right there, man. Yeah, because they, I they played a huge role in shaping kids. They still do. Oh, for sure, for sure. So. I mean, I don't know where I'm going at, going with that. But I think, I think just you're starting like, the next episode here. Yeah, let's, let's put a pin in that and huh. revisit it next Wednesday. Yeah, right. We'll, we'll have something totally else to talk about. <laughs> oh, I, I think I think we covered some good shit here. I, I think it's weird that I, I think I've mentioned aliens in every episode. Yeah, I know, you're, you're really preaching that. <laughs> I'm, really push, <laughs> I'm really pushing that shit. That's really part of your platform. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My platform, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you're almost... Are you an alien? <laughs> I don't know, bro. Are you, are you a lizard people? Um, yeah, no, there's this movie called The Cat from Outer Space. You ever watched it? The what? Cat from Outer Space. Cat? Yeah. No, I haven't. Hey, this is the second <laughs> the time that I've named a movie you haven't seen. Uh, well, I haven't seen them all, bro. There's a lot and of this them. Is, 
Oh, but Captain Marvel Space is such a... It's a classic, but it's so 80s. You know, it's very... Yeah. It's believable, but... You know... Mm. I don't know, it's I kind of... Now that we're talking about all of this, you know, I start to wonder about all the shit we watched. And yeah, man. It saved me. We're, we're it saved me. A lot, a lot of it saved me. Uh, well, I think, I think that's a good uh, um, place to start next week. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, Thank you. well uh, yeah. I'm glad you called, brother. It sounded like we weren't going to pull this off tonight. Uh, you, call, you called kind of tired and... No, we um, started out talking, you know, in the beginning, and we didn't. We didn't have no pretext. No, we didn't. I think it was or like we usually do, but like I said, I was kind of on it today, so I didn't. I didn't uh, send anything to you, but yeah, you didn't, send, you didn't say anything to me, so no, I didn't. What was up with that? <laughs> I know, we, we always talk about it at the end of the episode. All right, let, let's call it here. I'm going to hit the button, and then we'll, we'll continue this. <laughs> All right, I'm hitting the button. Here we go.